Hello traders, it is Wednesday, March 27th, after the market close, and we are going to find some great trades. In particular, I'm going to show you how to find great swing trades using the Option Stalker platform. Now, it is awesome for day trading, and that's primarily what I use it for. And I have some indicators to trade the S&P 500 E-minis that will blow you away. But I'm trying to expand my audience, and I've emphasized the day trading aspect of Option Stalker too much. It's fantastic for swing trading. All you have to do is to widen out your time horizon. So instead of using 5-minute and 15-minute charts, you use the same indicators on 30-minute and 1-hour charts, or 1-hour and 2-hour charts, depending on your time horizon. Before we get to all that, let's take a look at the prior picks. I sent you a video on Sunday. I always like to start with what I highlighted the previous video. I'm not cherry picking. These are three stocks that I showed you on Sunday. So let's see how they did. I had mentioned to you that market conditions looked very tenuous and that we'd be focusing on the short side. So here is the first stock chart. And this is symbol C-R-O-N. And what we'll do is we'll flip to the next chart. Here you can see a nice downward trend line and a breach of the 200-day moving average. This is IQ. And the final selection, here you can see a nice horizontal breakout to a new relative high and then a compression and a breakdown below that 200-day moving average. In fact, a breakdown below the 100-day moving average. Relative weakness, which we've talked about, high volume, has all the characteristics that we'd like to see in a stock. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, let me close that window. Members who logged in Sunday, I told you I was going to post the symbols for the, these three stocks in Option Stalker. That's exactly what I did. And here you can see the symbols IQ, CRON, and STI. So keep these three symbols in mind because that's what we're going to take a look at right now. Before we do that, this was Friday's close. So this would have been Monday, the first opportunity for us to act on that video. You can see that the market is a little bit higher than where it closed. So we've had the market working against our short positions. But don't worry, we picked the right stocks. So let me put in symbol STI. Here you can see that was the close Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and today. So the stock has inched just a little bit higher. And as I mentioned to you in that video, I'm going to click SMA. It's a little icon at the bottom. I'd like to overlay the 100-day moving average. This was our game plan, was to stay short as long as the stock is below that 100-day moving average. It still is. So we'll put up another symbol, and we'll put up C. R O N. That was another short. So in the first example, stock has moved just a tiny bit against us, but we've also had the market moving higher against us. This is C R O N. You can see here, this is the close on Friday. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we had earnings before the open yesterday. Boom, the stock is lower. So I would not have traded it ahead of earnings, but I certainly would have shorted it today when the number came out and the reaction was negative, knowing that we were already looking at downward price movement and relative weakness. Let's click on 1OSI so that we can have our one option strength index up. And there you can see below zero is weakness. So this would have been a really nice short position today to take. Opened around $20 and it closed somewhere around 18.23, so a lot of weakness today. IQ was the third and final stock that I highlighted. You can see the sell signal here. We've got the stock moving in a little bit of a downtrend. It had broken the 200-day moving average right there, 
and we see the relative weakness, we see the volume, beautiful short. So here you could have shorted the stock on the open on Monday morning at 24.24 and today the stock closed right around uh, 22.69 so it's a dollar and fifty cent winner. I told you if you acted on these you might be able to cover the price of the subscription for a year. If you did a thousand shares that's fifteen hundred dollars you're already making money. So what I'm showing you is not a fluke. This is what we do every single day. We use all of these indicators to increase our probability of success. Here I just showed you three excellent candidates that worked even though the market had moved against us. That is our edge. So let's go in and take a look at some other searches and we'll go to bullish and these are canned searches. I've been showing you pop bull for good reason. If you're a swing trader, you might not need any other search. There are tons of searches and I'm going to show you how to find some earnings plays in a few minutes, but this is a fantastic search. So let's click through and see what we've got. I will let you know when I see something I really like. Very choppy, needs to get through horizontal resistance, popped up today, still needs to get through this level, not crazy about it. I want nice orderly price movement, predictability. I don't have it here. Move on. LEN, not too bad, still choppy, but at least it trends. I love this breakout. You can see that it had earnings before the open today. Good volume, good relative strength heading into the number. Yes, I like this. So my game plan on this would be to buy the stock and to use this horizontal breakout as your stop. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that would be your stop if the stock gets below it, which was the low of the day. Stock opened here, tested that horizontal resistance level and bounced right off of it. Really nice how that works. Above the major moving averages as well. Beautiful. Love this. Big. Big lots. Nice horizontal breakout. It is going to hit some resistance here at the 200-day moving average. If you're just looking for a short-term trade, you could get in here, use that as your target, place an alert above that, GTC, like right there, and that way if it continues to move higher, you're going to see it. But what I like about it, and I'm going to right click on this just to get it out of our way, delete object. By the way, these alerts, it doesn't matter if you click GTC, it's going to come up whenever the stock hits that price point, whether it's a day or a week or a month or a year later, you're going to get a pop-up that says, hey, you're interested in this stock at this price, it's there. What do you want to do? So beautiful compression here, nice breakout comes back and it tests the low from that breakout and then it goes and now we've got another horizontal breakout we've got decent volume good relative strength right here and we're starting to fill this gap right in here so love it three stocks on this list all of them I like next one PXD love this through horizontal resistance above the 100 day moving average great relative strength Nothing there, nothing there, like it, like it a lot. Another compression here, breakout, good relative strength. Volume could be a little bit better, but nice looking and it still has room to the 200 day. MYGN. See how easy? This is so easy. All the heavy lifting's been done for you. Big rally up, compression, Breakout, stock wants to continue higher, good relative strength. Another nice candidate. This I'd be careful of. This could be a buyout because very, very tight price compression in here. After a big gap higher, another huge gap higher and tight price compression, probably another buyout. You can see a nice little breakout in here, though. Check it out. If this is not a buyout, FDC, it'd be a good stock to own. 
depression, breakout. I don't like it. Garmin, really nice. Love this tight, tight, tight compression. There's your earnings. So stock rallies hard on earnings. Now it has to consolidate. It has to digest that big move. So you get buyers and sellers pairing off and equilibrium sets in until eventually, boom, all the sellers are worn out and the buyers prevail and the stock will make another leg higher. I love this chart. Garmin looks great. Great for a swing trade. Let's zoom out. Let's see what it's got going longer term. Oh, yeah. Hit the plus sign to zoom out, or the minus sign to zoom out. Hit the plus sign to zoom in. Hit the empty magnifying glass to return back to the normal view. Nice. Not crazy about this one. Not crazy about that. Not crazy about that. Because I don't have the horizontal breakouts and the compressions. That's really what I'm looking for, and I want that relative strength. So in a matter of, if I didn't discuss why I liked, liked each one of these charts, it would have taken me about three minutes. If you're a swing trader, I hope you've got three minutes a day. You come in, let's take a look at one of these like big, and you set up your game plan. Here's my game plan. There's my breakout. Draw a horizontal line across it. You can have a GTC alert set. I'm buying the stock right now and if it pulls back to that level I can have a sell stop order ready or I can come in and place the trade the next day but that is my game plan is to stop the trade out if it can't hold that horizontal breakout. And then you can set an upside alert at the 200 day and higher. You just have to come in and check your portfolio each day or during the day, which I'm sure most of you are used to doing. But that's how easy it is. And you could do the same with any of these, MYGN, you name it. There's your horizontal breakout, that becomes your stop out point, and there's an easy target for you. Let's go in the pop bear search, and we'll take a look at some of these. I'm going to move through them pretty quickly. There's a nice compression and a nice breakdown. Earnings before the open. An A would mean earnings were after the close. So earnings before the open. Nice big sell-off. Still has to get through horizontal support here. So not crazy about this. A little choppy. That's a nice breakdown below the 100-day moving average in a downward trending stock with relative weakness. This would be a nice short. STM breaks that 100-day moving average. Little choppy in here, though. Probably will start to fill in some of this gap. I don't like the air pockets. And this, I believe, is an ADR. <coughs> Excuse me, American Depository Receipt. So uh, it doesn't trade as actively as I'd like to see. Nice downtrend. Breaks the 100-day. Still has to get through the 200-day. Because this is so close, would not be a favorite of mine. Too choppy. Too choppy. Downward. Trend. Some major moving averages to get through. But if it gets through these, it'll be a good short. So it would be one that I would take and drop an alert light on. In a week or a month, I'll get an alert and I'll go, oh, I'm not sure when I put that out there, but hey, I like the pattern. It's going to keep clear. This is nice. A lot of noisy, choppy back and forth in here, but a big horizontal breakdown and steady selling ever since. So I like that kind of pattern. This is nice. Steady downtrend. Breaking horizontal support and the 100-day moving average. Looks good. Got our sell signal there. Nothing really to write home about. If it gets through the 100-day, it's worth looking at. Let's place that alert. And one more. Love this. Nice, steady trend line down. Breaks horizontal support today. Breaking the 200-day moving average. Awesome. So let me go into a different search. I want to show you how powerful 
option stalker is during earnings season. Mind you, this is not your run-of-the-mill platform. I didn't spend 10 years to build run-of-the-mill. Sure, I've got all the different technical studies you could ever want. It's got every feature that you're used to seeing on a platform. See, there's all the technical studies, got some proprietary ones. It does everything, okay? But here's what you get that you don't get in other platforms. You get my proprietary indicators, this 10SI indicator for one. This 10P indicator is incredible, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, that's fantastic for trading the S&P 500. And then I have my squeeze indicator that tells us when stocks are compressing. These yellow dots and red dots all mean something. I describe them in detail in my video. All of my indicators are really easy to access. They're all toggle on, toggle off. So let me show you what we do during earnings season. I'm going to click custom search. This was the easiest, most intuitive way for me to design a search engine. There is no programming required at all. The green means bullish. The red means bearish. I've gone in and I've optimized each one of these indicators for each time frame. So all you have to decide is, am I bullish or am I bearish? And you can combine all of these and search for any variety of setups. Here's one of my favorites. Let's say that the market opens lower in a particular day. S&Ps are down 10 points. They're selling everything. What I like to do is I come in and I put option liquidity. I like to trade options. Option liquidity, by the way, we rate options based on their liquidity. So it's got to have a 2 or from 2 to 15. That would mean very, very decent liquidity. Then I mark stock is greater than the prior day high. Then I click heavy volume. Okay, I can go with the, with the uh, four hour or I can go with the daily. I click scan. These are my candidates. So on a day when the market is down, down, down on the open, hey, what's going the other way? If there's a stock that's up and it's above yesterday's high, it's probably pretty strong. And if the market finds any kind of footing today, these stocks are going to lead the charge. It's exactly what we do when we day trade. It works the same way for swing trading. So there's so many different searches that we can use, but what I'm going to do right now is let's look for option liquidity of one, give ourselves a little bit of room. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click pre earnings. There's only one stock with decent option liquidity that's going to be announcing after the close today or before the open tomorrow, TGTX. And here we can take a look. There you can see the stock. I don't trade pre-earnings. I don't like the risk, but at least I'm aware of what's coming out after the close because if I've got a position in it, then it's important for me to know I may want to take the position off and not have that exposure. But during earnings season, this is a very helpful tool. Now, there's also a resource, I'm going to move this off screen, in the platform where you can click pre-earnings options. I'm going to click that tab. All of these companies announce, and you see TGTX, after the close today or before the open tomorrow so that I can take a look and I can plan ahead. I can even see what the expected percentage move is, what the average move is, and how often that move has been exceeded. You can see Lulu, Lululemon, the expected move is 12.5%, usually moves 11.5%, but it has exceeded that range 50% of the time over the last eight quarters. So we have historical data available and it tells us that this stock has a tendency to really move after the number. For premium sellers, they may choose to look for a stock that hardly ever beats, like 000. It always stays within that range 
and then they sell straddles or strangles on that stock. That's not a strategy I employ, but it's one that if you're comfortable with and familiar with, what a fantastic resource. So that's also available to you. Now here's how I use the earnings all the time. Post earnings plays. When we are in earnings season, I lean on this so heavily because I want to see who came out and how they're doing. So let's click post earnings. This means that the company announced yesterday after the market closed or they announced today before the market opened. This is our first shot at trading this stock after it posted the number. And I don't just stop there. I also like to see which stock is moving higher. So it's above the prior day's high after posting earnings. Let's see what we get. We had a couple of candidates with good option liquidity. I'll move this off to the side. Let's take a look. There we've got a really nice breakout on KBH. This could be a stock that we want to buy for a swing trade longer term. Love the relative strength, love the volume, love the breakout. LEN actually came up on pop bull. So we've already had a shot at this. Above the 200 day moving average on a buy signal, good relative strength, good volume, nice horizontal breakout. So today if you brought this search up and you're watching the stock and you got a chance to buy it right here on that breakout, it came back there, you'd be in really nice shape because it continued to move higher throughout the course of the day. I can also see if there was a stock that actually moved lower today. B-A-L-E, after the number. They didn't like it. And there you can see this uptrend line has been broken before the earnings announcement. And you can see how the stock was down a little bit today. So this is relatively weak and you've got the 100 and 200 day moving average keeping a lid on it. If you shorted this, that's where you cover the trade if it gets above it. Very easy game plan. On a sell signal, relative weakness, all the things that we like to have in a swing trade. So let's keep looking at other ways that we can use this earnings tool. <clears throat> this is something that I devised. You may or may not be aware that certain stocks have a tendency to move higher into earnings. Well, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to know that a company is going to be announcing earnings in two weeks and it has a tendency to move higher into earnings announcements? Boy, that would be a nice stock to take advantage of and to have a position in right now. In fact, a lot of people sell at the money or out of the money put premium as a strategy. They want to take advantage of that time decay and if the stock does what it's supposed to and it continues to grind higher, they're going to keep the premium that they sold. So let's go in and take a look at an earnings date that would be <clears throat> from, let's say, tomorrow. So we're going to click on this, tomorrow's date. Again, we're looking for projected earnings date. And we're going to go out, let's go out into April. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to click on pre earnings bull. There's a counterpart pre earnings bear. So before we do the search, let me tell you what we're looking at. I've gone back over the last three years, that's 12 quarters worth of information, and I've calculated how many times the stock rallies two weeks ahead of the earnings announcement and how many times it's sold off two weeks before the earnings announcement. If 75% of the time or more the stock rallies into earnings two weeks out, it appears using pre-earnings bull. So now I've just nailed down the stock is going to be announcing in the next two weeks and it has this historical tendency and it has liquid options. Let's see what we get. Better take this off. 
prior day low. There we go. There are our candidates right there. So let's take a look. Move this off to the side. It's already made a big move. This is a nice breakout, could continue higher. Needs to get above that 100-day moving average, but this could be a good scoop here. It has a tendency to move higher into the number. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, all bank stocks. So we're hitting, they probably announce on that April 11th or 12th time horizon. These are some of the first companies to announce earnings. So uh, we're just getting to the cusp of earnings season. If I expanded this by a few more days, I'd probably get a lot more search results. And there you go. So earnings are only two weeks away. Netflix is one of them. Might be a nice candidate on a breakout. You buy Netflix, should move higher into the number. So that's how we use projected earnings into the future. I could also go and take a look at which stocks tend to sell off into the number. And look, there are some. There are a few. So I don't want to click through those because I want to show you another search that we can use. Earnings date previous. So who announced earnings? I can't tell you how many times I watch an earnings report come out and I go, wow, that was pretty good. I can't believe the stock is down. It seemed like a really good number. Oh, well, maybe it was overpriced and they're taking some of the fluff out of it. And then you look at it two days later and you go, holy cow, that was a good entry point. Look at that stock. That thing's $4 higher. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at a stock that has announced earnings in the last Let's go back to oh, the 11th, and we'll go up to current, and we can run this scan. I need to make sure that I've got my other box marked off, which, by the way, you can zero everything out, clear upper, clear lower. So now we're just looking for that previous earnings date and good option liquidity. That's all we're looking for. Lots of stocks that have recently announced earnings. Let's make this a little bit more restrictive. Let's look for stocks that are above the 20-day high. Ah, here we go. And we've already looked at KBH and Lennard. They just announced today, but what's this? TIF. Ooh. Hey, Tiffany. That looks really nice. Look at this. We got our earnings announcement last week. Really nice run up. We've got great relative strength and good volume. This stock looks like it's got a clean path to the 200 day moving average, which is about $110. It's currently at $104. There you go. So easy. And there are tons of combinations that you can use. And a clear upper, clear lower, engulfing patterns. What a fantastic thing to look for. This is a super, super powerful pattern. You can search for it. And then look at all these results I have. Well, holy cow, I don't want to go through all these results. It's too much. I don't have time to go through 50 different stocks. Okay, well, let's make sure that it's on a buy signal. Let's make sure that it's strong relative to the S&P 500. And let's see if it had heavy volume today. Well, let's go even with a four hours. So it closed on heavy volume today. Well, look, there's candidates in here. Now, instead of 30 stocks, I just narrowed down to two stocks. See what we got. Not a bad looking chart. Compression, breakout, 200 day moving average, 100 day moving average. Easy game plan, just had earnings the day before. Hmm, I can buy it here and keep my stop nice and tight, and it's probably got a clean path up to this resistance level. Traders, that's how we do it.
I'm going to be posting videos every Wednesday night and I'm going to be using the tools within Option Stalker to show you how to find these stocks. And there may only be one or two combinations that you even need to learn. It could be one of the canned searches that you find that you really like. It could be one of your own that you create. The possibilities are limitless, but this search engine is going to help you find these really, really strong stocks. So if you watch the videos that I post and you learn some of the different tools, it will take you five or ten minutes to click, 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 go through some of these charts. You'll have some excellent candidates. So I, in particular, I love to use these compressions and these breakouts and these major moving averages because it makes your game plan so easy to devise. Look, it got through. This is my support. This will be my stop if the market heads south or the stock heads south. Very, very easy to manage. You've got your alerts that you can use on a GTC basis. So Option Stalker is very, very comprehensive. I promised you I was going to show you something because I'm sure there are some day traders in the audience. And I'm going to take off all of the technical indicators and I'm going to go into a five minute chart and I'm going to remove all that good stuff right there and then I'm going to go down to my system icon here and I'm going to click on 1OP. I'm sorry that the uh, Chart's a little bit slow loading, but that's because I've got recording software that I'm using in conjunction with the trading platform right now, and it's not happy about what I'm doing. But here's the chart. I'm going to click off the buy and sell signals, and I'm going to put in symbol SPY because I trade the S&P 500 futures. And here's how easy the indicator is to use. This is all I use to day trade the S&P 500. Last Friday I made 30 points day trading S&P futures. It's not a bunch of BS. I post all of my trades in my chat room with timestamps. There's a cross. That is bearish. And look when it happened. Right here it's telling us danger ahead. Okay. Get ready to to be short so we get one more bounce out of the market this is where you'd want to start looking at a short you want to take out that low of the day that support level whoosh this is from today I could go back and show you day after day after day after day this is an unbelievable indicator look right here saying hey I'm troughing I'm way low right now and I just crossed over look at that buy right there. It took me 10 years to develop this indicator. It's as good as they come and I don't use anything else. If you trade S&P E-minis, you should really sign up for Option Stalker. I'm going to leave it on that note. I'm running a special offer. I rarely run special offers. This is my best special offer of the year. You can sign up for Option Stalker for an entire year and it'll cost you nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for the year normally it would cost you sixteen hundred dollars this includes real-time data so you don't need a special brokerage account you don't need to pay for data fees it is already included in the platform I hope you sign up I'm gonna keep posting more videos before this special offer expires on Sunday March 31st. If you're serious about your investments, you want to take them to a new level, I'm going to show you how to do this every week and I'm going to show you how to use this powerful tool. If you're a day trader, you should really get on board. Thanks so much. I hope to see you in the chat room and I hope to see you uh, in the video sessions that I do every week. Thank you.